everybody. Thanks for tuning in to RPM, Rock and Pop Mandolin. Once again, your site for learning classic rock and pop songs on the Mando, and even for learning some country pop songs. And that's what we'll look at today. My name is Mike DeJong, and today we're going to examine Copperhead Road, one of Steve Earle's most popular songs and one of the most popular mandolin tracks from, well, from pop music and country music history, but certainly it's a crossover song. It's not true country, it's not true rock or pop, it's kind of a mixture of both, even some elements of hard rock in this song, which I really like, but it's got a wonderful mandolin part. It's a very simple song, only three chords, but that, that signature riff off the uh, beginning of the song is really fun to play, and it really stands out when you're able to do it. I love that song, and I love that riff, so I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoy Enjoy today's tutorial on Copperhead Road by Steve Earle. But before we get to that, please, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do so by hitting that little red button way down there in the lower right corner of your screen. It really helps me to continue producing videos for you here, and I want to keep producing uh, many, many more videos in the future. So please subscribe, leave a like, and some comments down below also if you feel like it. So now, without waiting any further, let's dive into Steve Earle's Copperhead Road for Mandolin. All right, we've zoomed in for Steve Earle's Copperhead Road, a really cool mandolin song. Um, fairly simple, and it starts off with this iconic riff. So what is Steve Earle doing there? Well, actually, I should point out first that I've seen many people try to play the song on YouTube and uh, with varying degrees of uh, difficulty or not. And a lot of people seem to play it differently. Um, I watched Steve Earle playing it live on some TV show, uh, of course, on YouTube. But I watched him do it, and I'm trying to get the part, you know, as close to what he did uh, on that version. So that's what I'm going by here. So we start off in the key of D. Again, another one of these songs that has that nice open D chord here, the second fret of the G string and second fret of the high E string. And what he's doing in this song is he's hammering that note there, the second fret note on the G string to the A, so G, A. And every time he comes back to it, he he kind of takes a little bit of a pause to get that hammering note um, in there. So listen closely for that if you're going to listen to the original track. So you want to go like this. Right? So he, what is he doing there? Well, he's, he's hammering there at the second fret. Then he's moving, basically moving his middle finger all the way down here to the fifth fret of the G string. And you can play this lick with two fingers here like I do. So you move to the fifth and the fourth fret of the G string, then open and second, right? Like that. And all the while you're keeping that steady right hand going. Like that, so keep that rhythm going. So he goes like that. Back up to the fifth fret again. And then he stays on the open G, right? He doesn't go back up there. I used to play it like this. I used to go back up to that uh, fifth fret again, but actually Steve Earle, if you listen to it on the original and um, you know you, you watch some of his videos on YouTube, you can see he only goes... So he goes to end that lick. All right, and that pattern continues throughout the entire song, and uh, except for a couple of other occasions when there's another little chord change, which is pretty cool. And basically, it only happens uh, very quickly. He goes from the D to a G. 
right, so what's that? What's that chord progression? Well, the G is like that. And then what I saw him do was this kind of C chord, like that, rather than this C chord, which really kind of sounds, well, it really stands out as a C chord. This one is more like a G sus chord of some kind, right? So it, but it actually works over the C in the bass. So what am I doing there? Well, a G chord, second fret of the A string, third fret of the E string. Then I'm pulling just this one finger over, the pointer finger here, to the middle like that like that, which gives you like a, a C chord voicing, part of a C chord here, but it's still played over those last two notes, the bottom two notes. So once again, now the revenue man want to bend any bad, right? Something like that. Right, and you just keep that rhythm going again, right? Of course, you could play the part with the normal C chord. You could go. But for my ears, I don't hear that full C chord being played. I hear kind of that combination C, G there that works nicely. It's a little softer um, on that part, and I think it works nicely, but it's up to you. If you want to play it from D to G to C to G, then go ahead, play it that way as well. Finally, the last part that you really want to worry about is that... Right? You want to get that one... So it's one, two, three, four, five, 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 right? And really cut off that D chord. You could even play it this, this D chord this time. But you see the difference? It doesn't seem to have that same ring as the original. It's, it's nice and tight. You can really chop it off. But I prefer... That's Steve Earle's Copperhead Road for Mandolin, one of the great mandolin classics from country pop and rock music over the last, well, several decades. I hope you enjoyed learning it today. Hope you enjoy all of the lessons on this uh, channel, this YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, RPM, please do so by hitting that little red button down there in the lower right corner. Leave a like or a comment down below too if you want me to try a song in the future that maybe I haven't already looked at. I always appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much for watching RPM Rock and Pop Mandolin once again. I'm Mike DeJong in Tokyo.